Hello folks, Todd Halleck here today talking to you about a great estate planning and income tax planning tool known as the Donor Advised Fund or DAF, D-A-F for short. A DAF is a entity or a fund that's set up by a charitable organization to receive donations of cash or other property from you. Uh, one of the biggest examples of a DAF is Fidelity Charitable, but pretty much any brokerage out there likely has a donor advised fund or a DAF. Uh, even some smaller organizations uh, can have DAFs that you can set up and you make charitable contributions into the donor advised fund and you get a charitable deduction in the year that you gave the contribution to the fund. But the trick is to DAFs is the money itself doesn't have to go to charity in that given year. And you can make donations to a DAF for income tax purposes in the same way that you can make them to an existing charitable organization like your church or the Red Cross or something like that. Meaning you're limited to 50% of your adjusted gross income but in the same way that it could go to that organization, it can go to a DAF. So why would a DAF be uh, beneficial as opposed to just giving it to the organization? Well, number one, with our higher standard deduction, a lot of people aren't eligible to get charitable donations on their income tax return. So some people have chosen to what we call stack donations. So they'll stack donations into the donor advised fund in year one, and then in year two, they'll distribute those out. So for example, if they pay tithing to their church, maybe they pay it all two years worth of tithing in one year into the donor advised fund. And then in year two, they move that uh, um, contribution from the donor advised fund over to the church. They take the deduction to the DAF in year one, and then they take the standard deduction in year two. DAFs can also be a great place to dump um, charitable contributions on your death. Say we want to limit the amount of potential taxes your estate will pay, we can have a portion of those taxes paid uh, or what would go to taxes paid directly into the donor advised fund. If you're selling your business or you're selling appreciated real property, some donor advised funds will work with you and they will take a donation in advance of the sale then they will participate in the sale and what is sold by the donor advice fund isn't subject to capital gains tax. So there's some real versatility to the donor advice fund. The donor advice fund itself is a 501c3 uh, um, charitable organization, um, just like in many ways your church or the Red Cross or institutions like that. There's one uh, big exception though and that comes with what we call the qualified charitable distribution. This is for people 70 and a half where they can pay, make charitable contributions directly from their retirement account, their IRA, their 401k into a, uh, or to a, uh, an operating charity. And that's kind of the secret, right? A, a, a donor advised fund is not an operating charity. And so those QCDs, qualified charitable distributions cannot be paid over to a donor advised fund but any, pretty much any other type of uh, charitable contribution that you want to make, you could make to a donor advice fund. Maybe you don't want to uh, make the distribution today, maybe you, to the charity, maybe you wanna make it down the road. Donor advice fund's great, um, a great instrument for, for that. Um, you can um, give pretty much any kind of asset you want to the, to the donor advice fund, but they're probably not going to want to keep uh, gifts of closely held business stock or real estate. They're going to want to see that be sold relatively quickly and, and turned into a more liquid uh, investment. Um, one of the nice things about donor advised funds is that uh, if you don't want the charity to know where the, the gift is coming from, um, you, can, you can do so anonymously. So it just looks like a gift from the donor advised fund um, and as opposed to you personally, so you won't have the charities necessarily contacting you and, and wanting to solicit additional donations. So there's a level of anonymity. Um, 
it's uh, the money inside the donor advised fund grows tax free. So it's not growing subject to future income tax it's, or estate tax, it's growing uh, tax free. Um, what are some of the cons of, of donor advised fund? Well, uh, they do come with, most of them come with fees. Uh, it used to be a little bit cost prohibitive to get in, meaning your initial contribution was quite large. But many, I mean, I think I see Schwab and, and Fidelity, you can actually start with nothing, right? You don't have to make any initial contribution. Some are uh, only a couple thousand or a few thousand dollars. So the initial entry contribution isn't as significant as, significant as it once was. Um, but uh, when you do put money in there, there are fees. Some institutions may have limitations on who you can make distributions to. So while there's no law that requires an annual distribution out of your DAP, some institutions may require that you make an annual distribution from your DAF to a, a, an operating charity. Um, there could be some limitations on grant making. Uh, and, and like I mentioned earlier, that some uh, DAFs may require that you give to charities that they're affiliated with. Some may prevent you from giving to charities that you might otherwise want to give to. And so therefore you should look into, before you set up a DAF, what sort of limitations are going to exist in terms of of, of grant making in the future. Um, sometimes, uh, this is college football season, some of us are boosters of our favorite uh, college football program. Um, DAFs are not a great vehicle if you want to make uh, donations to the booster club and you're going to get any sort of uh, remuneration back like tickets or, or things like that. So can't use DAFs for that purpose. And um, once it's, the, it's in the DAF, I mean, you're going to be limited in your investing to the investment opportunities that are available for a, in the donor advised fund. I mean, they may have, uh, you know, 50 or 100 different mutual funds that you could invest in or maybe less. Sometimes you're generally not going to be investing directly in uh, individual stocks. And like I said before, not going to be investing in uh, closely held businesses or um, real estate, if you're wanting to do things like that long term, private foundations might be a better way to go if there's enough capital to justify it. But a donor advice fund, really anybody can do it. And, and frankly, the number one benefit of a donor advice fund is it's an opportunity to create an atmosphere of giving in your family. You can create a legacy uh, within your family by funding, putting assets into that donor advice fund, allowing it to grow over time and involving your family members even for multiple generations into that giving process to really uh, teach them the importance of giving back. So I can't sing the praises of a donor advised fund enough. I can't think of any good reason why a person shouldn't have it, whether regardless of income, regardless of asset size, I think a donor advised fund can be a great vehicle for both income tax and estate tax planning. We're sitting here today, September 11th of 2023, when I'm filming this video. Um, we've got just a few months left in the year. Uh, great time to get one set up in advance of any sort of year in giving that you might want to do. So uh, take a look at donor advice funds, see if they can't help you. I bet they can. Uh, and we hope you've enjoyed this. And if you ever need help with planning, make sure you're talking to a qualified advisor.